Bless the Lord. Well, today I want to talk about Christian character. Uh, and you're thinking about the thought of Christian character, it's, it's uh, what the, I'm dealing with today is, is something that's personal, something that applies to us as individuals, applies to our personal lives. Uh, you think about Christian character, it's also something as we, we talk about, it's very powerful because it, it deals with our past, our present, and our future, and what God is doing within our lives. And I believe also that personal power is also what I'm going to share today is practical, and I hope that as we share it, that, that you'll, you'll, you'll continue to gain a picture of the grace of God, how God is at work in your lives. So one of the, uh, if, if those who have been listening to my preaching for a period of time notice that there's a certain understanding of grace that I believe that God has given me and that, that God loves us deeply. He understands us deeply and he's at work within our lives. And again, as I'm sharing today, I want you to see that grace of God, that God sees beyond our past, beyond our present, He sees us in the future. He sees the finished product. He loves us. Thinking about Christian character. First of all, turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 29. And and I want to think about this. First of all, that the Father sees our future. He knows our future. God looks at us and he doesn't just see our present state. He sees us as the finished product. Romans chapter 8. Looking at verse 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that we might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What a powerful passage. What a powerful thought. That that we are predestined to be formed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. The Father, when he looks at us, sees the finished product. Whatever has happened in our lives, in our past, whatever is presently happening in our lives, whatever will happen in our lives, we know that we are predestined to be transformed into the image of Christ. He says that we will be glorified. At the end of uh, of verse uh, 30, he says we're going to be glorified. We will be transformed into the image of Christ with the glory of Christ upon us. God sees beyond our present reality. He sees the finished product. We look at ourselves and we see all of our faults and we see our failures. We look at our past. We, we look at all of our things that we've done wrong. And yet when God looks at us, he sees something different. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says this. For we are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's an important verse. In fact, do you have your bulletins there? Pull out your bulletin. Pull out your pen. I had a pen here just a second ago. Oh, I left it down there. On the back of your bulletin, I would like you to write out this verse and memorize it this week. Could you do that? Get your pen out. Let's write it. I'll quote it to you. You'll write it down. I'm giving you an assignment. 
Well, now, Pastor, I didn't come here to have to write something down. No, you came here because you wanted to grow in God. Amen? And if you want to grow in God, tucking a little bit of the Word of God in your heart's not a bad thing. Amen? How many want to grow? Hallelujah. Let's put some Word in our hearts. Write this down. I, I, I just want you to memorize this. I was thinking about this this morning. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's workmanship. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. We are created, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. You'll have your pen in your hand. Pull out your communication card. On the back of it, just put a note saying, Pastor, I will memorize this verse this week. Go ahead. Put a note on. Let me know because I want to know how many people are going to memorize it this week because I want to start adding a little bit because, again, what we're trying to do here is not just have a service, take an offering, sing a song, preach a little bit. We're trying to create growth. And if I can maybe encourage you to take some next steps with my sermons such as memorizing a scripture I'd like to know if it's going to work because my goal is to create growth I believe that's kind of like the Holy Spirit's goal as well for us Amen? So put a little note to me and say Pastor I'm going to memorize Ephesians 2.10 How many already haven't memorized? Slip your hand up Oh, man, there's A lot of it's going to be really easy because it's, it's a good verse a lot of us already haven't memorized for we are God's workmanship. The word workmanship means to, uh, that we are God's uh, work or we are God's uh, creation. Uh, some people translate it, we are God's masterpiece. That God is working away at us just like a, a sculptor would be working on a sculpture. God is sculpting us. God is sculpturing us into his image. We are being created into the image of Christ. We are his workmanship. God looks at us and he doesn't just see a lump of stone. God looks at us and sees something in its completed form. I've heard, I, I, I'm certainly not an artist by any means. But we have an artist in our midst. Jackie is actually working on a, a, a huge painting right now for a company in Ontario, am I right? Of a silver fox. I, I've seen pictures of the, uh, what do you call the first ones you did? First, the two, that she did two studies and sent it off, and now she's working on a large one. But before she begins the first spot of paint, she has to have it all decided in her mind what it's going to look like. She has it all sketched on her canvas. We were talking about this the other night. It's all sketched on the canvas. The, the, it's all marked out on the canvas. She has the picture in her mind. She knows what it's And then she just creates it. And the Lord knows who you are. And he knows what he wants to make you into. He sees the finished product even before you start it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's just, this is beautifully put here. Paul says so it is written the first Adam speaking of Adam from the garden became a living being the last Adam speaking of Jesus a life giving spirit he's, he's looking at Adam and Jesus and he's, he's drawing this parallel that the first Adam 
was a living being, that the last Adam, Jesus, was a life-giving spirit. And he continues on this thought in verse 49. He says, And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, just as we've borne the image of Adam, how many can recognize Adam inside of them? Adam and his rebellion, Adam and sin, Adam and failure, Adam and all the junk and all the, 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 the sickness and all the pain of life came from the sin of Adam. And we can look at ourselves and we can see Adam in us. But when God looks at us, he sees something else. Because the verse goes on and says this, And just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of of the man from heaven. We have borne the likeness of that earthly sinful Adam, but God sees us as bearing the image of the heavenly man, Jesus Christ. He is looking at us and we see our, our failures, but when God looks at us, he sees the finished product. The Father sees us, the finished product. My second thought is this. The Father is shaping or sculpting us with that image, with that future in mind. He is sculpting us with that image in mind. That's why we look at uh, Romans chapter 8. We, we read chapter uh, 8 verse 29 that, that uh, though for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed in the likeness of Christ. The verse just previous to that, Paul says, and we know that all things, then in all things God is working for good for those who love him, for uh, who are called according to his purpose. When we think of the, that God has predestined us to be conformed the way that he's predestined us to be conformed, the, the, the tool that he's using to sculpt us is, is life itself. He's using all things in this life. He's using all things to sculpt us, to shape us into the image of Christ. All things. God is working for the good of those who love him. That good, we think, well, God is using them for what? What's the good? Can I, can I tell you quite honestly, I look at some things and I see that there's not a lot of good in them. Have you ever found that in life? You go into the hospital, go through a cancer ward. How many, there's not a lot, you don't see a lot of good. You go to a senior's home and visit a relative and their body is there but their mind is gone years ago. They don't see a lot of good sometimes in life. But God is able to use the worst things in life to shape us, to shape those around us into the image of Christ. He works all things together for good. He works good out of every situation. Everything that we allow him to work in, he can work good out of. In fact, sometimes even the things that we don't allow him to work good in, he's still working good. He can work good out of everything. God is working good out of everything. We think, well, the good thing is if God made us healthy, wealthy, and wise. That's what we would want. You know, we, we would want, you know, all the, the we, if we had what we wanted, we'd be in, living in heaven and earth, wouldn't we? We wouldn't age. That's what we'd want. But God isn't so concerned about that. He wants us to be shaped in the image of Christ. God wants good to be produced in our lives. The good that he's looking for is the character of Christ. He's looking for good in our lives. And you know what? I believe there is good in your life. I believe there's good in my life. How many agree with that? There's good in there. That why is there good? There's good in you because God put it there. God, and he's just got to work on it to get that good to come out. Now think for a moment. You say, Pastor, I don't see a lot of good in my life. Think about it for a second. Are you born again? If you're born again, do you have God in your life? If you've got God in your life, you've got good in your life. And you just got to let that good work its way out. 
And God is using life itself to bring that good so it just fills your whole life. You think of the creation. Ian was talking about creation uh, the other day with me. And, and, uh, and when God created all things, he created man and breathed the breath of life in him, Genesis 2. And Genesis 1 tells us, uh, the, the last verse, the verse 31 says, And God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. God created all things, and when he was finished, he said it was very good. Now think about it. When God created man and God created woman, he looked at them and said, They are very good. God created you with goodness inside. God created even that nasty person that you have to deal with at work. Maybe it's a neighbor. I know you all think it's your spouse, but it's not. God, God, has, God has put good inside of everyone. And the Holy Spirit wants to come. He wants to bring good into our lives. He wants to see good flourish within our lives. The Father sees the finished product. The Father is shaping us with that finished product in mind. Now, what is it that the Father is shaping us into? What does He want us to become? My third thought is this. What does He want us to become? You know, oftentimes we get concerned, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what do you want me to do in life? I know that the, 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 uh, through the teenage years, we think, Lord, what's the job you want me to do? What career do you want me to follow? What person do you want me to marry? What's your will? What's your plan? What's your... And we, we struggle with all those things. But can I tell you, it's not so much about what we do in life that God is concerned about. God is more concerned about his main issue is not what we, be, what we do, but what are we becoming. We can do all the do's, but if we aren't becoming more like Christ, guys, we aren't knocking it out of the ballpark. We're missing the ball altogether. We are striking out. We can do all the do's, but if we are not becoming, then we're missing it. His goal, his desire, the picture that he has in mind is he wants us to become like Christ. Being is more important than doing. Character is more important than accomplishments. He is concerned about us being more than us doing. Why? Scripture tells us this. We should be concerned about God's thought because we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. God will judge us. Now listen to this. That each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether they're good or bad. We will judge, be judged. Now scripture tells us, now follow, don't lose me here. Follow this, this thought that I've got. Being is more important than doing. Why? Because we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. When we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, we will be judged for what we are doing. Now just listen. But pastor, you said being is more important for, than doing. And yet, you're saying that God will judge us on what we do. Let me explain this. When we stand before God, we will be judged on the motive behind our works. The Lord says some will be like gold, silver, and precious stones. Some will be like wood, hay, and stubble. And they will be tried like fire. And only the works that were done with the right motive will be of any value in heaven. We will be judged by the motive behind the works. 
What is the motivation behind the works? We will be judged by what's in our heart, the overflowing of our heart. You stand before the Lord and you have no works. You know what that'll tell you? It'll tell you you've been lazy. When we stand before God, our works will be judged based upon our motives. Paul says this, If I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, I'm only a resounding gong and clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give my possessions to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Christian character is this. It is God shaping us to the image of Christ. That image of Christ is that we would walk in love, that we would be motivated by love, that we would gauge our attitudes by love, that the thing that would compel us, as Paul says, the love of Christ compels me that we would be compelled by love, driven by love, pushed by love, that we would want to reach out to those outside the, the, the kingdom of God because of love, that we would want to help those within because of love. There is no greater testimony, there's no greater example of the image of Christ than that when we act in love. The Lord God sees your life. And even though we look at our lives and say it's not perfect, God sees our lives and He is shaping us into the image of Christ. He is at work. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we bow in your presence, O God. Lord, we pray, O God, that you would chisel away at our hearts. Lord, there is so much, there is so much that needs to be removed. There is so much that needs to be changed. Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to come. Work in our hearts, oh God. Work in our hearts. Lord, we pray this for your glory. I'm going to ask Shayla. I've got a little video I want to show. It talks about God chiseling away at our hearts. Just before we go into communion, I want us to, to watch this, and then I'm going to speak again for just a couple of minutes before communion.
this salvation that you hold. I don't want it to be some sentimental bush or some head knowledge. I want you to work it out in every detail of your life. And when problems come and chaos happens, don't look at it as a, as a prison, but look at it as a father disciplines child. A father disciplines the ones he loves. That was his friend. Yes, but you learn the life with you. Everything was going to be easy when he gave everything over to you. There will be trouble in this world. God has made each one of us here his masterpiece. We are his workmanship. And he is shaping our lives that our lives would reflect the love of Jesus Christ. He is at work in our lives. Stand with me, would you?